In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to make this animation of text with a background that sparkles. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.78c. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. To make it easier to see the scale and location of the objects that we'll be adding, switch from Perspective to Orthographic View by pressing 5 on the number pad. When we render the final animation, it will be in perspective view. Now delete the cube by right-clicking on it to select it, and then press X to delete. Now let's add some text. So press Shift-A and select text. Then rotate it on the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. To edit the text, Press the Tab key for edit mode. Then backspace to delete the default text and enter in your own text. Then press Tab to return to object mode. Next, let's add some thickness to the text. So click the Object Data button and set the Extrude value to 0.1. Set the Bevel Depth to 0.02. Leave the resolution set to zero. Now let's add a material to the text. So click the Material button and then click New. Then come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. Set the material to Glossy. Then set the Roughness to 0.1. We're going to set up the text so that the edges emit light. To do that, we're going to make a duplicate of this text and give it a different material. We'll also make its size slightly different. So press Shift-D to duplicate, and then click the right mouse button to put it in the same location as the original text. We're going to change the surface type to an emission shader. So click this plus button to make a copy of the material so that the material of the original text is not affected. Then change the surface type to emission. Then set the color to a hex value of E7C383. Now I'll switch to rendered view. Next, we're going to make this text smaller than the other text everywhere except the edges. So click the Object Data button and change the bevel depth value to 0.019. This will make the text slightly smaller than the other text so that it will be hidden. Currently, the beveled edges are flat, but if we round off these edges, then they will protrude through the edges of the other text. To do that, set the resolution value to 2. Now only the edges are emitting light. I'll switch back to solid view now. Next, let's add a floor. So press Shift-A and select a mesh plane. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 100, then Enter. Now we'll move it into position. So press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then drag it to the bottom of the text. Now let's set up the material for it. So click the Material button, and then click the New button. We'll keep the diffuse surface type. Now let's change the color of the background, so click the World button. Then set the color to black. We don't need the default lamp for this project, so find it in the outliner and click the button that looks like an eye and the button that looks like a camera. This will turn off its visibility in the 3D view window and in the final render. Now we're going to add a sphere and animate its position. So press Shift-A and add a UV sphere. Then scale it down in size by pressing S, then 0.5, then Enter. Now let's add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. So click the Object Modifiers button. Then add a subdivision surface modifier. Set the view and render values to 2. 
then click the Smooth button. Now let's set the material for it. So click the Material button and then click New. Keep the diffuse surface type and set the color to a hex value of E72100. Now we're going to set up this material to glow around the edges. So switch to the compositing screen layout. Then click the shader nodes button. I'll switch to rendered view so that we can see the changes as they're made. Now we're going to mix in an emission shader. So press Shift A and select Shader and then Mix Shader. Drop it on the connection coming out of the Diffuse Shader. Now press Shift A again and add an emission shader. Connect it to the bottom Mix Shader input. Set the emission shader color to the same color as the diffuse shader. To do that, press and hold the left mouse button on the diffuse color and then drag it down to the emission shader color. Keep the strength value set to 1. Now press Shift A and select Input and then Layer Weight. Connect the facing output to the factor input. This will control how the diffuse and emission shaders are blended together. The surface areas that are angled away from the camera will use more of the emission shader than the surface areas that are angled toward the camera. For the blend value, I'm going to use 0 0.03. Now I'll switch back to the default screen layout. This is a good time to save what I have so far. So from the file menu, I'll select Save As. I'm going to name it sparkle.blend. Now we're going to animate the position of the sphere. So drag it until it's just a little above the floor. Now press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then press G to move and drag the sphere behind the text until the right side of the sphere is even with the right side of the text. Now set the frame number to 100. Then set a keyframe by pressing I, then select Location. This will be its final position. Now press 1 on the number pad for front view. Now set the frame number to 60. Then move it on the z-axis by pressing G, then Z, then 1.2, then Enter. Then move it on the x-axis by pressing G, then X, then minus 3, then Enter. Now press I and select Location to set another keyframe. Now set the frame number to 1. Then move it on the x-axis by pressing G, then X, then 4.8, then Enter. Then move it on the Z-axis by pressing G, then Z, then 1, then Enter. Now press I and select Location. Now I'll press the Play button so that we can see how it moves. We're going to be adding a particle system to the sphere and the particles themselves are going to be icosphere objects. So let's add an icosphere object now. So press Shift A and select Mesh, and then Icosphere. For the material, select the Emission Shader. Set the color to a hex value of E7C383. This is the same color that we used for the text. Later we're going to be adding a glare filter. We want the glare filter to be applied to the particles, but not the text. To do that, we'll make the particles brighter than the text. The strength of the text emission shader is 1, so set the strength of this shader to 2. Now drag the icosphere below the floor so that it can't be seen directly. 
Now we'll add a particle system to the sphere. So right click the sphere to select it. Then click the particle button. You may need to resize the panel on the right to bring the particle button into view. Now click the new button. Set the number of particles to 1500. We want to emit particles from frame 1 through frame 100, so set the end value to 100. To make sure that the particles remain visible throughout the entire animation, set the lifetime value to 1000. To prevent the particles from moving after they are emitted, we'll be changing two values. So set the emitter geometry normal value to 0 to prevent the particles from moving outward away from the sphere. Then open the field weight section and set the gravity value to 0 to prevent the particles from falling. Now we'll set the object that we'll use for the particles. So click the object button and then select the icosphere that we added earlier. Set the size to 0 0.025. Now I'll move the time cursor to frame 1 and press the play button so that we can see the particles being generated. This is what it looks like in rendered view. I'll switch back to solid view now. To make the particles sparkle, we're going to change their size during the animation. We can do that by adding a texture to the particle system. So open the texture section and click new. Then click the texture button. Make sure that the particle system is selected from the drop down menu. For the type, select Distorted Noise. You can see a preview of the texture here. Change the distortion value to 5. Next, change the mapping coordinates to Strand Particle. We want this texture to change the size of the particles, so remove the check mark that's next to Time and add a check mark next to Size. Now when I press the play button, you can see the size of the particles change. Next we'll set up the camera view. So press 0 on the number pad for camera view. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the properties panel and put a check mark next to lock camera to view. Then press N again to close the Properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. Now I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. Now we're going to add a glare filter, so switch to the compositing screen layout. Click the Compositing Nodes button and add a check mark next to Use Nodes. Now we'll add a Viewer node so that we can see our changes as we make them. So press Shift A and select Output and then Viewer. Connect the Image Output to the Viewer Image Input. To view the image using the viewer, we need to add a check mark next to Backdrop and then render the image. To render the image, click the Render button. When it's finished rendering, the rendered image will appear in the background. If you want to zoom out, you can do that by pressing the V key. To zoom in, press Alt-V. Now add a glare filter by pressing Shift A and select Filter and then Glare. Drop it on the connection going into the Viewer node. Then connect the glare output to the composite input. Make sure that the glare type is set to Streaks. Then set the number of streaks to 6. 
I think that the streaks look better if they're rotated a little, so I'm going to set the angle offset to 20. The threshold value lets you control where the glare filter streaks will occur. Areas of the image that are brighter than the threshold value is where the glare filter will be applied. If the threshold value is set too low, then the text will also have streaks. I've found that a value of 0.8 works well for this project. Next, switch back to the default screen layout. Now let's finish setting up the animation. The animation is going to be 200 frames long, so set the end frame value to 200. Now click the render button, and then open the sampling section. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 100. The larger this value is, the better the final animation will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now come up to the output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. Click on this button and select a directory. Next, click here to set the file format. There are multiple movie formats that you can choose from. I'm going to use Aug Theora. Now we're ready to render the animation, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. To render the animation, click on the Animation button. If you want to stop the rendering process before it's done, you can press the Escape key, or you can click the X next to the Render Progress bar. Now I'll pause the video until it's done. The animation is done rendering now. It took my computer about 35 minutes to render. This is the final frame that was rendered. If you want to return to the previous view, you can click this button and select 3D View. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation. Or you can press Ctrl F11. The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. Now if you open up Windows File Explorer or something equivalent, you can navigate to your movie file. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you specified, you can now play your video. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.